Well, I'd like to welcome everybody here uh, to this webinar hosted by Seller Rocket, welcoming Dr. Travis Ziegler, the CEO of iLove. He's uh, a great, phenomenal speaker uh, in everything Amazon, as well as tracking the listing. He's a very, very successful seller, uh, and he has agreed to you know present all of his knowledge base to all of you here. And with that, I will turn it over to you. All right. Thanks, Chris, for having me on and happy to be doing this webinar with Seller Rocket. A lot of good nuggets in this. So I'm going to say prepare to take notes because you will want to take notes for this one. Um, if you've never seen me speak before, I talk a lot with strategy, but then also the tactic behind that strategy. So you're going to learn the strategy and the mindset behind something. Then you're going to see tactically how to do it on the slides. And then if time permits, I'm going to be jumping in and you can actually watch me over my shoulder as I do exactly what I teach in this webinar. So I'm going to share my screen and then we'll jump into the presentation. And you guys have probably all seen the, the, the title of the presentation because um, we sent it out in the email, but I'm going to be going over the seven hacks to build an impenetrable moat around your Amazon listing. And the reason I, I go over this is because this is something that we've been doing with my company, I love. And what this does is it makes your Amazon listing immune to the competition. And it's going to show you how to make your product and your business last for years to come. This isn't a, a one-off tactic or that's going to last for this year, and then it's going to be gone next year. This is something that if you start to do today, if you start doing all seven of these today, you're going to make a long lasting business. And if you start to do even just one of these today, it's going to make a big difference in your business. So this will also make you appear everywhere to your customers. Top of mind awareness, also called Toma, is just how many impressions you're, and how many times your business is seen across the entire web. So you're going to be learning things today that's going to take you pretty much everywhere across the web. So when people are looking for whatever you're selling, they know your brand and they know to buy your brand. And I realized that we were doing a good job at this when an optometrist, I'm in the eye care space and I'm an optometrist as well. And one of my colleagues came to me and he said, she said, I can't look up or research anything related to optometry without seeing you all. And so when I knew that was happening, that's when I knew we were creating this moat around our Amazon business. So with that being said, I'll just do a brief introduction about who I am. I'm Dr. Travis Ziegler again, an optometrist. I graduated the optometry school at Ohio State in 2010. I'm also the founder of iLove. We founded that company in 2015. We did about 5.5 million in 2021, and we're on pace to do anywhere between six and seven million this year. We did sell that last year in 2021, but we still run it. My wife and I do. That's my wife over there with my two kids. I'm also the founder and CEO of Profitable Pineapple Ads Agency. For those who came early, that was the bad pineapple jokes that I was saying. Thousands have been helped with our strategies around Amazon PPC, DSP, and attribution. And we're, we're even starting to do some influencer marketing just like Seller Rocket does. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later as well. My passion is really just to help you all. I used to actually be a professor at The Ohio State University as well. And that kind of, I think, has translated into this. I just love to teach and I love to help others achieve the financial freedom using Amazon. And then my superpower is Amazon PPC and audience building. So you're going to learn a little bit of a couple of those tactics in here mostly going to be Amazon PPC based and other Amazon strategies. Um, I don't go into audience building too much, but I do a little bit in this webinar. All right. So how to build an audience, how to build a moat in seven steps. Moat building step number one is going over how your ACOS goal is wrong. And moat building step number two, I'm going to teach you how to double your conversion rate on your listing overnight. And I'm not lying when I say that. Moat building step number three is external traffic boost part one. And we'll get into the importance of external traffic boost in just a little bit. Mode building step four is external traffic boost part two. I'm going to go over how to protect your house in mode building step number five. Number six is going to be external traffic boost part three. Again, this will all make sense in a little bit. And then finally, one of my favorites is mode building step number seven. When you have to battle a dragon that's going to fly over your moat, how to stop that dragon that can do that. So that being said, let's jump into secret number one or step number one of building your moat, which is your ACOS goal is wrong. Now, something that drives me nuts, and you guys can probably see this in the Helium 10 groups, in my Amazon PPC group on Facebook, everybody talks about their low ACOS. I'm getting a 5% ACOS. I'm getting a 10% ACOS. I'm getting a 15% ACOS. And that's great, but there's no context behind that. Low ACOS can be good for some businesses, but usually it's not. And most people are going around ACOS the wrong way. And when you're going after a low ACOS, you're leaving sales on the, the table. You want to know your numbers inside and out, your lifetime value of your customer, what it takes to acquire a customer. I'm not going to show you how to do all that. But what I am going to show you is how to calculate your ACOS goal 
and your target ACOS. So what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate your break-even ACOS, which is essentially just your profit margin. I'll show you how to do that here in just a little bit. And then we're going to figure out your target based on what product you sell. So let's calculate that first and then kind of show you an example so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So the first thing we want to do is calculate your maximum cost per acquisition, which is also known as your profit. And this is just your sales price minus your Amazon fees minus your cost of goods sold. Pretty simple calculation. Sales price minus your Amazon fees minus your cost of goods sold is your maximum cost per acquisition, also known as your profit. Next, what we're going to do is calculate your break-even ACOS, which is your profit margin. So we've calculated our profit. You're going to take that profit and divide it by your sales price. So your maximum cost per acquisition divided by your sales price, your profit divided by your sales price. I'm just saying this in, in different ways for people to kind of comprehend it a little better. And then that's going to give you your break-even ACOS. So your profit margin is your break-even ACOS. What break-even ACOS means is that as long as you're hitting at that ACOS or below, that advertisement is profitable. If you're hitting above that ACOS, then your, your advertising is unprofitable. Now it's okay to go unprofitable for some, some situations. So you should be shooting for at least a break-even ACOS on your product in order to drive organic ranking for more sales. That is the key point that I want you to take away from this first strategy is if you're going after a 10 to 15% ACOS, that might be your break-even ACOS. I hope it's not, but that if that's your break-even ACOS, then that's great. Hit that 10 to 15% ACOS. But number one, you shouldn't be selling a product with a 10 to 15% profit or profit margin. And number two, you should be going for more. So most of our profit margin is around 40 to 60% for our products because we build that in. We put a higher price on our product. We don't really care what the competitors are, 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 are charging for, for a, a product. We just care about making that high enough margin to be able to advertise it, to be able to push it more. So with that 40 to 60% break-even ACOS that we have on our products, we can go after a higher ACOS as a result. So an example is, let's say 50% is my break-even ACOS. If I sell a consumable, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go above break-even ACOS. So I'm actually going to take a loss on my ACOS. So I might go for, for 60 or 70% ACOS because a consumable, they're going to come back and buy more. So knowing that lifetime value and how much they come back, we have about a 40% repeat customer rate. And so we know that our lifetime value is a lot higher than somebody that sells a one-off product. Now, if you're selling something that's like a plastic widget from China, then you might want to go under break-even ACOS where it's only purchased once. You might want to go under break-even ACOS just a little bit so you can profit from every sale. But if you're pushing organic rank and you want to push more organic rank, you need to raise that ACOS target to be around where that break-even ACOS is. And th this is very business dependent. So don't think that this is like set in stone. This is business dependent. You have to make that decision what's right for your business. For ours, it's to go above break-even ACOS, to go after a higher ACOS because we know they'll be coming back for more. So just keep that in mind. So this is an example of that whole thing put together. My sales price is 15. My Amazon's fees are 544. My cost of goods is 325. My profit or my maximum CPA is 628. When you take 628 divided by 1497, I get 42% break even ACOS, but we're going to go after a 10% above that at 52% because this is a consumable product. So this is a, a client of ours that we took on in January of 2021 and when we took them on, they were doing about 120,000 a month. And we kind of went over this break even ACOS plan with them. And by December of that year, this is not that much of a giftable product. It kind of is, but it isn't. Um, we had them up to about 300,000. You can see that dip towards the end of the year that was actually due to stockouts. So um, 120,000 to almost 300,000. I think they're all the way up to 500,000 now. Is this the only thing that we did? No, of course not. We implemented our whole Amazon PPC strategy, but this was just one part of their, their strategy that we used and to accelerate their growth. And so it does work. So your action items for this first step is to calculate your break-even and then determine your target ACOS. Shoot for a break-even ACOS, not a low ACOS. If you're just going after a low, low ACOS, you're leaving sales on the table. You can increase your organic rank by increasing the ACOS you're going after. So be aggressive, be aggressive. So moat building step number one, going over ACOS. Now I want to talk to you about moat building step number two and how to double your conversion rate overnight. Now, most people don't believe me that this can happen, but there is a very simple way to double your conversion rate overnight. And this is something that we do 
leading up to a big sale. You can do this when you're launching a product. You can do this when you need a boost in your product for like maybe five, seven days. And you can do this before a big sale. So we just did this before Prime Day. We're recording this in August of 2022. We just had Prime Day last month. So the five days leading up to Prime Day, we doubled our conversion rate for those five days. And then we stopped it for Prime Day. The reason we did that is because a higher conversion rate equals more sales, which equals a higher organic ranking for Prime Day. And so Prime Day hit, we had increased our rankings, and then more sales came as a result from Prime Day. So what is it? Simply a massive coupon of 50% or more. So you may be thinking like, I can't afford to do a massive coupon. That's where the price comes in. I don't compete on price. Price your product where you want it to be priced. Don't worry about your competition. And then put a coupon on it to, to balance it out. So one of my products, I'll show you guys later, is $30. The lowest cost competitor is $8. So I charge $22 more for my product. They charge $8. I charge $30. But what that allows me to do is it gives me plenty of margin to do things like this. And so the five days leading up to Prime Day, we did a 50% off coupon. And then on Prime Day, we did a 20% off Prime exclusive deal. So it boosted our rankings for Prime Day. So the best part about this is that coupon redemption rate is only around 30%, regardless if the coupon is 5% or 50%. And the reason is, is people just don't clip coupons. They're right there on the listing. It says clip this coupon, but people just don't clip it. It's crazy. It's 30 to 35% redemption, no matter how big the coupon is. And so keep that in mind. We always have a coupon on our listing, whether it be 5% or 50%. We always have something on there because redemption rates so little, especially if you're in the consumable space, you want to get them on subscription. And once they're on subscription, they'll never see the coupon again. Also the coupon, you can do a three month expiration date. And so with the coupon, they'll use it that first time they buy it. And if your, your product's in every month order, they'll use it that first month. They won't see it the second or third month. And then they'll see it the fourth month again. So they'll buy three of them with just that one coupon. So don't be afraid to go big on your coupon. So this is our conversion rates for our products. This was actually in January of this year. We were actually trying to slow down sales during this time because we were stocking out of a lot of a lot of products. We got hit with the, the global supply chain shortage. But you can see our conversion rates. 49%, 45%, 34%, 50%, 34%. Very high conversion rates due to these coupons. So just keep that in mind. And Chris, if at any time you need to stop me for a question, don't be afraid to do that during the presentation. Yep. We had one just come in too. It says, are you doing prime top deals or do you find it's better to just do prime exclusive or not worry about T60 metrics for partner sales? Yeah, so we use, we don't do lightning deals or anything. Um, the coupon is actually under advertising. It's called a coupon. It's not a promotional code. And this is something that you can just clip. And then for Prime Day itself, we do prime exclusive deals just because um, we just, we don't do lightning deals anymore. It's too dependent on Amazon. And I like to be dependent on myself and not have to worry about a third party. So that's why we don't do lightning deals because prime exclusive deals, we can control it. We know it's going to be these two days. And so um, lightning deals, it could be at five in the morning or one in the morning and you just don't have control over that time. But lightning deals can be good for some people. So I'm not against them. I just don't use them in my business. All right, action items for remote building. Step number two is put a 50% off coupon and turn up your Amazon PPC whenever you need rankings boost or one to four weeks before a big sale event like Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Prime Day, Christmas, New Year's, the day of the event and season, turn off that 50% off coupon and then put a smaller coupon on one to $2 or do a prime exclusive deal or something like that. So this works incredibly well. I'm telling you, it works so well. And if you can take one thing from this, just take that, plan it out five days to 10 days to 15 days before a big sale event, big coupon, pump up your Amazon PPC, one other note I want to make is the days leading up to Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the days leading up to Prime Day, nobody's buying. But if you have a 50% off coupon, they'll buy. So your PPC, you can pump it up a little bit and turn it up, be a little more aggressive because your conversion rate is going to go up, not down. Everybody else is retracting with PPC and they're lowering their conversion rate because they're not offering anything like this, but your conversion rate is going up and your PPC is getting pushed harder. And so Amazon's going to be like, what's going on with this, this listing? And it's going to push you up higher in the organic rank. So I love this strategy. It works incredibly well and it shouldn't stop working in any time in the future. Had another quick question come in. Yeah. 
You mentioned that you are pricing high. Are you saying to raise the price temporarily in conjunction with this coupon? I don't raise it temporarily just because my items are higher priced to begin with. But yes, you can do that. And it may not even be temporary. You may be surprised by finding this higher price with a little bit of coupon it actually makes you more profit. It's all about testing. So you just got to test it. So let's say your product is 15, you increase it to 20 and you put a $5 coupon on it, or maybe even like a $2 coupon on it. You may see your conversion rate go up as a result of that coupon. So don't be afraid to test this. Don't be afraid to test a higher price. Every time we test a higher price, even I am scared to death to test a higher price. But what if this happens? But every time we test a higher price, it ends up being better. It's it's crazy. It, it doesn't compute in your mind as a, as a seller, but it works so incredibly well. And I don't know why. I, I really don't know why. And so higher price with a coupon on it works pretty much every time for us. Another one came in real quick. How are you winning the buy box when you use the coupon and raise price? Um, just don't go up too much. You just have to go up a little bit. I've had no problem raising my price $5 and not losing the buy box. Um, but yeah, so like, let's say your product's $10 and you go to 15 or 20, you might lose the buy box. So just be cognizant, cognizant of that and just watch for it. So watch for, if you do raise that price, make sure you have the buy box. Cause of course that will drop your conversion rate faster than anything else. So yeah, just raise it enough to make sure you don't lose the buy box, usually 10 to 20%. Cool. Let's let's move on to moat building step number three, which is external traffic boost part one. Now you guys have probably heard this, but external traffic is all the rage right now on Amazon. Amazon loves external traffic. It doesn't matter that it converts lower. It doesn't matter that it's you know you're sending a thousand people and only you know maybe ten are converting. Amazon just loves you sending traffic to their website. They love it so much that they're actually rewarding you for that external traffic. And if you guys have not heard of this yet, there's that new brand referral bonus, which I'll go into in just a little bit. Now, the thing you need to know is what I already went over with external traffic. Number one, it's not going to convert as well. Therefore, the ACOS is going to be higher and it's going to cost a little bit more to do this. But due to it being external traffic, it's going to increase your organic ranking as a result. So most people think of Google and Facebook as your top external traffic sources. And I'll go into a bunch of other ones here today. And what you need to think about when you're thinking about these platforms is what's the intent of the person that's on that platform. So what I mean by that is Facebook is interruptive marketing. TikTok is interruptive marketing. Instagram is interruptive marketing. What that means is somebody's on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. They're just trying to escape from the world. They're just kind of scrolling and you need to convince them to stop go over to Amazon and buy your product. So interruptive marketing is going to be a lot higher ACOs. It's not going to be as big of a return on investment as something like Google or Bing. Google, for example, is a search-based intent marketing. Amazon is a buyer-based intent. So people go to Amazon to buy. It's pretty easy to convert for that. People go to Google to buy, but also to do research. And so depending on where their mindset is, they might not be ready to buy yet, and so Google is going to be more profitable than Facebook because there's more intent to purchase behind it because they're looking for something to research and buy, whereas in Facebook is just interruptive. And then Amazon is going to be your best return just because Amazon, of course, is buyer intent marketing. So with that being said, Amazon came out with this brand referral bonus. And I want to read this verbatim for me. This is from Amazon. Delight customers while improving marketing efficiency and earning a bonus. Now you can earn a bonus of 10% of product sales driven by your non-Amazon marketing efforts. The more traffic you bring, the more opportunities you have to earn a bonus. The bonus is provided as a credit on your referral fees. So to give you an example, this past 30 days, we've sent almost $45,000 in referral traffic or external traffic to Amazon. And with that $45,000 in sales we've made, we'll make a $4,500 brand referral bonus as a result. So that's extra money in our pocket as a result of sending this external traffic. And these ads also convert really well too. And so some of my ads that I've been, been getting, we've been getting anywhere from a, you know, a 100% ACOS is our highest we'll go with these external traffic ads. But some of my more recent ones have been anywhere from the 10 to 50%. And so to put that into a ROAS standpoint, which is a return on ad spend, every dollar I put in, I get X amount back. Some of these ads have been getting $7 back. So a dollar I put in, $7 back. Dollar I put in, $5 back. 
some of these ads have been getting that high, plus they're getting that bonus as well. So how does it work? It's pretty simple. I'm going to show you how to do this here in just a little bit. You generate an Amazon attribution tag. You add the tag to a campaign. You receive a bonus. It's pretty simple. So inside your campaign manager, you're going to go to that bar graph over to the left, and you're going to click on Amazon attribution. After you do that, you can click create new campaign. Um, I just name them AA with a number. That means Amazon attribution. This is my 30th campaign, and I'm running a Google ad for $5 off tea tree soap, or this might be a Facebook ad. Um, one of the key things for this page is you can see under products, make sure you click add all on this page. Because when you click add all on this page, you're going to get credit for everything that's sold that's under your brand, not just what you're, you're advertising for. So let's say in this example, you can see I have an eye cream, a fish oil, and another fish oil. So what I would do is I'd advertise for the tea tree soap cold, which is the title of the campaign. But if they spill over and buy any of these other things, I, I get a brand referral bonus as well. And so you want to always do add all on that campaign. It's so important to do that. After that, I use a canonical URL. I don't use black hat tactics. I don't use two steps. I don't do any of that. Um, did I in the past? Yes, of course I did. Everybody did. Um, but use a canonical URL or just simply the URL when you pull up your product. Use that full URL. Now, I want to repeat this just one more time. Your ACOS is going to be much higher for these, but you have to remember that Amazon rewards external traffic with an increased organic ranking, and you get 10% of your sales back. So after we've made that link, we're gonna have to put it somewhere. So here's the five steps to building a Google attribution ad. The first thing I like to do is I like to download my search term report and campaign manager and sort it by the most sales. I usually pick anywhere from five to 10 or maybe just two. I'm gonna show you an example today where I'm just gonna pick pretty much two keywords or search terms bringing you the most sales on Amazon. I make my attribution links like I showed you above. And then I'm gonna make a Google ad going directly to my Amazon listing. And then I track the results. And I'll show you how to do all that here. So let's talk about creating your Google ad. And it's so simple that if you've never started, even opened a Google ad account in your life, you can do it in probably close to 10 minutes. You'll see me, I'm gonna do it very quickly just to get through it. I can do an ad now in probably two to five minutes. Once you get, now that you're learning, it will probably take you 10 to 15 minutes, but it's incredibly quick. So inside Google ads, we're going to hit create new campaign. We're going to do website traffic as our goal. So we're just trying to get clicks because you can't do sales because you can't, there's no attribution data to go back from Amazon to Google. So we're going to do website traffic and we're going to do a search based campaign. Here's an example of all my names. So AA01, 07, 09, 12, 21, 31. And for budget, we're gonna do anywhere from, you can do five, 10, 20, whatever's comfortable for you, whatever within your budget. Start low, work your way up. So it's always best to start low and then work your way up with budget as you start to see profit. So you don't blow a bunch of budget. So maybe start with $5, work your way up. I have one campaign that's doing hundred dollars a day um, and it's making about a five ROAS. So Every $100 I'm putting into this campaign, I'm getting $500 in Amazon sales back. So that's my best campaign, of course, one of them. Bidding. This is what you want to focus on right here. Clicks. We're trying to maximize clicks with this strategy. So make sure you pick clicks in that one. And then the next one is networks. And so what we want to do is we want to uncheck both of these. They're going to be checked by default. You want to uncheck them. You don't want to go over across Google search partners. They don't convert as well. And we're not doing any display advertising, which is something completely different than search advertising to begin with. Pick your location, whether it be the United States or wherever you're advertising. Pick your language as well. And then remember that the ad group is the most important part. The goal is to drive as much traffic as possible for the cheapest amount. We want a low cost per click. So that's where that maximizing clicks that I talked about earlier. So when we're putting our keywords in, what we want to do is we want to put those keywords in and We'll put a parentheses around them and a quotations around them. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, that's simply the quotations is a phrase match. The It's not a parentheses, but it's a bracket. That's exact match. So we're just going to do those two. We don't like broad. Broad on Google has gotten way broad. Uh, phrase on Google is more broad now. So don't use broad. Just use phrase and exact. But you can see right here on a $20 a day budget, I'm going to get 33 clicks per day. Average cost per click of 60 cents. Now, the example I'm going to run through today 
it's actually going to show you a lot more than that. And so it depends on what keywords you're going after. It will depend on how many clicks per day you're getting. What we're looking for even probably more than just this 33. Um, but this is actually another campaign that's working really well for us right now. But the one I'm going to show you today is going to get anywhere from 300 to 400 on that $20 a day budget. All right, so let me show you some examples of some ads. So save $5 on tea tree soap bar. Made with organic ingredients, save now on Amazon. Now, the nice thing about these ads is since we're sending them to Amazon, we can use the word Amazon in our ads. Usually you can't do that because Amazon is a trademark term, but we're sending traffic to Amazon. So use Amazon's name because Amazon instills trust. You can put bestseller on Amazon. You can put 4.5 stars on Amazon. You can put free shipping on Amazon. Just keep using that Amazon name because people know it, they trust it, they love it. Something else you can add to your ads are called site link extensions. And what I recommend doing is putting attribution ads in this or articles. And so you'll see me talk about articles a little bit later on in this webinar, but these are extensions of your ad, but make sure that they're, they're very similar. I'll show you an example of this. So this bottom part right here, these are site link extensions. And so 50% off eye cream, save big with hydrate for a limited time only. Hydrate is given 50% off its eye cream and face moisturizer. These will go fast. This non-greasy formula is made to save your eyelids, not harm them like others. And then irritated eyes collection, eyelid bumps management, five best eyelid cleansers, manage dry eyelids. And if you have a phone number, put your phone number on there too. All right, so this is what we do when we track the ads. So we manually track this. I haven't found a software that can really do this for us, um, but it's very simple. It's you put in your ad spend for the week, you put in your revenue that you made from the Amazon attribution link, which you can find in campaign manager. And then we calculate our brand referral bonus in there and it tells us what our ROAS is. And so you can see an example on that second bar where we spent $17, we made 85. We got an $8.50 referral brand bonus. And so our ROAS was $5.50. So pretty good deal. So let's go over some troubleshooting with this. So some troubleshooting is if you're not profitable, if you remember when we were setting that bidding, we just did maximize clicks. Right under that, let me actually just go back. You can see the set maximum cost per click bid limit. You can actually set how high you want your cost per click to go. So if you're not profitable, what I would do is I'd look at how much your cost per click is, and I'd just go below that. So let's say it's 50 cents. I'd set my maximum cost per click to probably 40 cents just to see that. If you're not getting impressions, make sure your ads were approved. If you're getting impressions, but no click, no clicks, redo your ads. You want your ad to correspond with the keyword that you're bidding on. This goes for Amazon too. This goes for any advertising. You want to be able to read your customer's mind. So if I'm bidding on eyelid wipes, like this example, my headline of my ad is going to be save 50% on eyelid wipes. And then it's going to go direct to Amazon where that coupon's able to be clicked. If you're not getting clicks, the keywords that you're bidding on and the, the ad itself, they're not close enough. They're not similar enough. They're not, you're not getting a compelling reason to click on that. So if you're running out of budget, but you're hitting your ROAS goals, simply increase your budget. If you're getting lots of clicks, but no sales, look at the keywords again, change the copy to match your Amazon listing. Just make sure there's congruency across the whole thing. Keyword, ad, Amazon listing. So that all has to make sense. It all has to be congruent in order for you to get clicks to get sales. So your action item for this is just try to build out one of these Google ads to your Amazon listing per week. Now, why one per week? Because about six out of 10 will not work. Three out of 10 will do okay. And then one will go absolutely nuts. And the ones that go nuts are the ones that are fun. That's when you can really start to scale this. Now, a lot of people ask me, why should I only build one per week? You can build as many as you want. I'm just saying set a goal to build one per week because then by the end of the year, you'll have 52 campaigns that you've built. And like I said, 10% of those will do okay. So you'll have five to 10 of those that will do really, really crazy good. And then you'll have, you know, anywhere from, let's see, 15, 15, about 15 to 20 that will just do okay. And then you'll probably shut down the other ones. The key is you got to just keep going. That's anything with this business. Just keep trying it. Keep going. Keep trying. Keep trying. Now your ROAS target for this is a one, two, three which is a 33% ACOS to 100% ACOS. Because again, we're taking external traffic over to Amazon. So just keep that in mind. 
Okay. Had a couple uh, questions come in. Let's do it. Yep. So uh, some great info here. My question is how to lower the PPC spend after I have ranked many keywords and what to lessen the spend on those keywords. As in like keywords on Google or keywords on Amazon? <laughs> is that, that would be the question. Amazon. Okay. Well, that's a completely different webinar. <laughs> um, you can figure out the same thing though is, yeah, that's a completely different webinar, but I can go over it real quick. You have to figure out how many clicks to orders you're getting. And then you have to figure out your maximum cost per acquisition or your profit. And then you take the maximum cost per acquisition, divide it by your clicks per order. And it spits out a little number called your maximum cost per click. So um, download your search term report, look at your clicks to order ratio, and then take your maximum CPA divided by the clicks to order ratio. Very hard to explain without having slides on that one. <laughs> But yeah, that's a completely different webinar. And if we have time, I can pull you up. I can pull up an example. Yeah. And then another question. Are you only using this Google ad strategy with the 50% off? Um, no. Or do you also use it when you're not running 50% off coupon? I do it all the time on no matter how big the coupon is. Remember I said that I always run a coupon, whether it be 5% or 50% off, I always have these running. And so um, $2 off is appealing to some. The example I'm going to give you today is a 50% off, but you can do this as low as you know, $2 off. So like we have one for the eyelid wipes running right now, it's $2 off eyelid wipes. So they go over to Amazon, they buy our eyelid wipes for $2 off, but we're still the highest price on Amazon. One of the highest price. Great question. All right, Chris, and you're gonna make a mental note of me showing you how to calculate maximum CPC if I remember to do it. And if I have time by the end of the webinar. <laughs> Got it. Had a couple more questions come in. Cool. Um, is it 10% commission only on the products or anything that customers buy on Amazon in the next 24 hours? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, it's not like the affiliate program, if that's what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. It's just on the products that you select. So that's why I have you select all the products. That's a great question. And then do you also do Facebook ads or do you focus on Google? Well, you'll have to just wait and see for remote building step number four. <laughs> <laughs> And then one final one to come in, this will work on listings you share with other sellers. And even when you do not have the buy box, since you are send them directly to offer or on the listing, right? Okay. This will work on the listings you share with other sellers. And even when you do not have the buy box, since you send them directly to your offer on the listing, correct. So if you, you're making the link and so make sure you put it, the link to be towards your offer. So if you're a wholesaler, for example, and there's 20 other people on that that listing as on the buy or somebody else has the buy box, make sure you make the link. So it only goes to your offer and then they won't see any of the other offers. This is actually probably going to be better for you than Amazon PPC because with Amazon PPC, you have to have the buy box in order to run Amazon PPC. But if you're not winning the buy box, you can't run Amazon PPC. But with this, you control it. You control the Google, the Google ad traffic straight to your offer page. They won't see the other offers. Great question. All right. Quick recap, target a higher ACOS than you're probably targeting now. Just make sure you, you calculate that break-even, figure out your target based on what you sell. Do what's best for your business. Coupon to increase conversions. Don't be afraid to go big on these coupons. And you don't have to do it forever. You can turn them right off after you turn them on. The nice thing is the coupon, not a promo code, the coupon can only be used on one product, one unit. Promo code can be used on multiple units. So don't use a promo code. Coupon, one product over a three month time span. So they don't go crazy like they used to go back in the 2015s when you lose your whole inventory on a bad promo code. And then finally, external traffic, Google ads to your Amazon listing to increase organic sales, to increase external traffic to get that bonus, but also increase your organic rank. All right, let's move on to mobile building step number four, which is external traffic part two. And this is with Facebook. So like I said, you just had to wait just a little bit longer. So with Facebook, we can do the same thing. But remember when I talked about with Facebook, this is interruptive marketing, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. You can do this with all three of them, but it's interruptive marketing. So our ROAS target is going to be a little lower. Our ACOS is going to be a little higher. And so you have to keep that in mind when you're doing this. I personally don't run a ton of Facebook ads. I have a couple running, but I focus on Google ads. I have a ton of Google ads running. We're spending close to $700 a day on Google. We spend, we used to be spending close to $6,000 a day total on traffic, but we're switching from new client acquisition mode to now profit mode. 
And now that we're in profit mode, we're not spending as much, but we're still spending about $700 a day on Google. So to make a Facebook ad, you just go into your Facebook ads account, you click create, you click traffic. Again, we want clicks. We can't give them conversion data because conversion data, we need Amazon to communicate with Facebook. They just don't do that. So we're going to do traffic. We're going to name it that AA30, Amazon Attribution 30, $5 off Teach Yourself Cold. Um, you can do interest-based and all these different targeting, but you can let Amazon do the, or Facebook do the heavy lifting for you instead. So when you're choosing your audience, know the person that you're serving. I serve postmenopausal females. Our products are great for dry eye sufferers, postmenopausal females. It's not, that's not everyone who has dry eye, but that's the majority of people that have dry eye are postmenopausal females. So 40 year olds and older women in the United States. I leave it open. I don't do any demographic interest or behavioral based targeting um, just because I let Facebook do the heavy lifting. But if you have some of that data already, use it, use it to your advantage. But I'm trying to give you the most simple, easy steps to do it right now. So we're going to create our Amazon attribution link like shown previously. And then there's our audience again. I must have that in there twice. And I feel like I'm going backwards now. <laughs> That's because I am going backwards. All right. There we go. That's what I meant to do. All right. So this is the ad. And you can put like emojis and everything on here to make it stand out more, but put the sale at the top. So $5 off, 50% off, $2 off, whatever you're doing. And then talk about some of the, the benefits of your product, 100% vegan, all natural support, using organic ingredients. And then that big, ugly link, believe it or not, it gets clicked on. I don't shorten it. I don't do anything like that. I put it up there, but then I also put it down where it needs to go with Facebook ads. Um, check price and purchase. It kind of cr creates more of a curiosity but it's a call to action. You have to tell them to click here or check price and then the shop now. And then you see the scarcity there, hurry before this deal is gone. And so if you have a, a set date that it's gonna be gone, put that date in there. But if you don't have a set date on, just put like something generic like that. So Facebook troubleshooting. Um, if you're not profitable, if you're getting lots of clicks, but no sales, you need to fine tune your audience a little bit more. So pick a new audience to target or even change your offer. Your offer might not be enticing enough. If you're not getting impressions, check for ad approval. If you're getting impressions, but no clicks, you need to redo your ads and look at your audience targeting. Something I wanna go over with this ad is when I put that link in there, Facebook pulls that photo in. It pulls your reviews in for social proof from Amazon and it pulls in the picture, your primary image. And then it says amazon.com. So that provides a little bit more um, staying power and people are more likely to buy because it's from Amazon and trust. All right. So um, if you're running out of budget by hitting your ROAS goals, increase your budget. That one's pretty simple. So same thing here. Action item, build out one Facebook ad to your Amazon listing per week. Why one per week? Because six out of 10 will not work. Three out of 10 will do okay. And then one will go absolutely nuts. Um, just remember that. And you, if you want to do more than one per week, that's great. My ROAS target for this one is one to two. It's a little lower because we're interruptive marketing. Now this also applies for TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of those. So just keep that in mind. All right. I'm gonna jump over to live real quick and show you guys this. We're gonna build one for Google and one for Facebook. So if you have questions about anything that I'm doing in here, uh, just put them in the chat or put them in the questions and then I can get to them. But I'm going to build you one live here in person. So um, this is the one I'm doing. You can see we have a 30% off coupon, higher priced, $37.99. Not cheap, like 15 to 20, like everybody else is doing. We're almost double our comp competitors. And you can see up here too, 38, 38, 30 as well. Um, I always make a plan. So I have a, a coupon plan right here. And then here's all the sunglasses I'm going to go after today. So we're going to jump over to our campaign manager. Let me make this a little bigger for you all. And actually, let me show you guys one more thing. Here's the coupons. So advertising coupons. I'm not going to show you how to make those. Those are super simple. It's a joke how easy they are to make. But advertising coupons. Do not use promotions. Use coupons. Coupons, coupons, coupons. So let me go back here. Easy way to calculate your profit and your profit margin is I use the Helium 10 Chrome extension, um, but your tool of choice probably has the same thing. 
But if you scroll down, is Helium 10 not going to work for me right now? Let's reload. That's funny. I don't know why it's not working, but I'll show you on another product. There it is. Now it's popping in. OK. There we go. OK. So if you scroll down to revenue calculator, and then let's say these cost me $5 to make. You can put it in FBA or FBM. So $5 to make. So fees are $9.42. My cost is $5. So my net is $23.50. That's my maximum cost per acquisition is $23.50. If I pay less than $23.57 to make a sale, I'm profitable. So let's calculate that profit margin. 23.57 divided by 37.99. So I have a 62% break-even ACOS on, these, on this product. Just wanted to show you guys that real quick. All right, let's jump over to campaign manager and go to measurement and reporting. So measurement and reporting right here, Amazon attribution. We're gonna create a new campaign. I have my naming already done over here. So this is gonna be AA46, 30% off sunglasses. This is my tracking sheet that I showed you. We, we track some other metrics as well, but profit's the main one you wanna measure. So I'm gonna put my name in right there. You can see all my products right here. It's done by brand name. So if you have more than one brand name, you'll have to pick it over here. Pick all on this page. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up all five that I'm gonna be advertising today. Okay, so we got them all here. They all have their coupons on. There's 50%, 50%, 50%, 30%, and 30%. All right, so with these, this is your canonical up at the top. So right here, amazon.com, women's polarized sunglasses, designer bonuses, DP with your ASIN number. And all I did was get that from just clicking on it over here. So now what I'm gonna do is scroll down because I've added them all on this page. And I'm gonna create a couple different ad groups. So I'm gonna pick Leek Brown, that's the name of our sunglasses. Select publisher, Google AdWords. I'm gonna find the brown ones. They're gonna be right there. Put that in there. I'm gonna add a new ad group. Close that brown one. I'm gonna do my black ones. And we're going to come down here, Leak Black, Publisher Google, and then pick a new ad group, close that one, do that same thing. We're going to do the pink, Leak Pink, close that one. Now we're going to do blue, Leak Blue, Google. And the last one, purple. Google. All right, so now I'm going to hit create up here in the top right corner. It's going to create those. I'm going to come over here to my Google Ads now. I'm going to create a new campaign. So you can see this is our stats from the last seven days. We've driven 21,000 clicks in the last seven days, 135,000 impressions. Average cost per click of 10 cents, $2,000 spend. And so that's over seven days. That's not that long of a time period, but a lot of impressions as a result. So let's do a new campaign. We're going to do website traffic. Now, if you've never used Google Ads, your Google Ads will not look like this. When you sign up for a Google Ads account, they give you the Express account. What you want to do is switch it to expert mode. There's a, a setting like up here somewhere that you can switch it to expert mode. Make sure you do that because then you'll get all this. All right. So I named it. I'm going to set this budget. I'm going to start this one at 10 to test it for a week before I start picking up or raising the budget. I'm going to switch this from conversions to clicks. I'm not going to set a maximum cost per click. We're going to click next. I'm going to unclick both of these. Again, these are all in the slides. So you don't, if, if I'm going too fast, I'm doing that on purpose so we can get through it. United States. Then we're going to click next again. Here's my keyword section. So here's where the magic happens. So I'm going to put sunglasses in as an exact match. And if you look over here to the right, you're going to see I'm going to get 50 clicks per day for just that keyword on $10. Let's put phrase match in of sunglasses and see what happens. 
So we're gonna get 254 clicks per day with a $10 a day budget at four cents a click. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's a lot of clicks. The final URL, I'm gonna focus on my main listing. So let's go back to the attribution links. So I'm gonna find my Fleek Brown. That's my main listing. That's the one I'm gonna be focusing on. Sale on Suns. And then what I'm gonna do is come over here and we're gonna do 30% off sunglasses on Amazon. Hurry before this deal is gone. I'm gonna pin this one to the top. You don't have to worry about pinning or anything because what Amazon or Google will do is it will cycle through your ad copy and figure out which one's best for you. But I know the sale one works the best. 30% off sale sunglasses on Amazon. Thousands of reviews, best seller on Amazon, um, polarized sunglasses. And then down here in the description, I love has 30 to 50% off sunglasses for a limited time on Amazon. Hurry before this deal is over. All right, so that's simple. You can add more descriptions. You can add more headlines. I don't, I just keep it simple, but you can. Then I'm gonna click done. After that, we're gonna click next. You're gonna see the extensions here. So I'm gonna select and create new campaign site link extensions. We're gonna click new right here. And I'll show you what these are again in just a little bit in case you forgot. 30% off polarized brown suns. All right, so let's get that attribution link again. And then we're gonna do 50% off purple suns. And we'll grab that attribution link for our purple ones. And then let's do same thing, pink. Actually, let me see if I can fit. Let's see this, there we go, yeah. And then the pink ones, we'll grab that link. And then the final ones are the blue ones. And then let's grab that blue link. All right, final URL. So we'll click save. Now we'll pop them all over here and then you can preview it. So there's your ad right there. And then there's your site link extensions right there. So it just makes your ad a little bigger. So let's go to next and we'll go to our final preview. All right. And it will tell you that you should be spending $20. Don't worry about that. And then we're just going to hit publish. So now we're down to 132 clicks per day. So that's okay though. I'm also took hundred clicks per day. So we're going to publish that one. And then I like to put a link over in my tracking sheet. So it's easy to track. And we'll go back to this. Put a link here because it will be easier to track that way too. And then I put that it started on 8.4 and then I have somebody on my team that comes in here and tracks all these every single week. These are all my Google ads. And like I said, I do a lot with something that we're gonna go over here in just a little bit. So let's go on to Facebook. And so we're gonna make one on Facebook as well. So let's go back out here. Maybe. Okay. So here we are inside Facebook. We're gonna do that same thing. So let's come out here again. And we're gonna create an attribution campaign again 
on Facebook. So I'm going to create campaign. I'm going to call it AA47, 30% off sunglasses. We're going to do that same thing here. So I'm going to open all these up again. All right, and then we're going to come down here. Bleak Brown. Publisher is going to be Facebook this time. And then we'll do that same thing. We're going to create all those. And if you don't have, you know, five products that you're advertising for, it can only be one. It only has to be one. I'm just showing you an example of five products that we all have a sale running on. This is mostly because our season is coming to an end, so we want to get rid of them. Facebook, pink, and then blue. And then finally, purple. And I hit create. So let's go over to Facebook while that's creating. In Facebook, we're going to hit create. You can see I don't run a lot of Facebook ads. I've actually been turning these off because um, like I said, we've been switching from new client, client acquisition mode to profit mode. Facebook being the least profitable of all these, we had to shut them down because they weren't hitting um, the ROAS goals that we had set now that we're going into profit mode. All right, so traffic. With that being said, they still work incredibly well. All right, so we named it and now we are in to the ad set, which is gonna be your audience. So with this product, I'm gonna do a $5 a day budget. My audience for this product is a little different. It is females, but it's not postmenopausal females. It's gonna be more of that 25 to 35 category. And then female in the United States. So you can see link clicks per day, 16 to 57. So we're going to go over to the ad now. So this one, you just create a simple ad. And, but I'm going to create a carousel more. And this is going to be, maybe I'll do a carousel. Hold on, let me look at it. It's going to let me. Uh, yeah, it's not going to let me. Let's go back to single image or video. There we go. All right, so we're going to do the fleek brown again. That's our main one. And we're going to come put that into your website URL right there. And like I said, it will pop in the picture. I'm just writing some simple copy. Click here to purchase. Big long URL. Purchase on Amazon. And then the call to action button, we're going to do shop now. So pretty simple. Add copy. And what you can do to do the other ones is you just come over here. You can duplicate it. And let's go up to this one first. We'll call this one Bleak Brown. And then this one will be, let's do the purple. And we'll go grab the purple one. And then I'll repeat this for every single variation. And then Facebook will cycle through which one's getting the most clicks. So we'll come all the way down here, change that to the purple. And it will change it up over here. I'm going to change this link to the 50% off. 
And then, like I said, you could do that for the, the blue and the pink and then the black ones as well. I'm just gonna publish it for now. And then that adds live too. All right. Take a look. Cool. No further questions right now. Yeah, no questions at the moment. Cool. All right. And like I said, if you guys have questions, don't be afraid to put them in the chat. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I'll even try to get to that one about Amazon PPC. That is not relevant to this presentation, but we can try to get to it. All right. Mo building step number five is you must protect this house. Now, there's a ton of real estate on your Amazon product pages and your competition has the ability to advertise all over your listing. Now, that's your house. That's your listing. I don't like people advertising on my listing. And so you have to, have to, have to protect your house. Now I hear you saying like, what if I don't have a high enough margin to protect my listing? Or what if I only have one to two products? The answer is actually incredibly simple. Make a variation, make a three pack, make a six pack, or even a 12 pack variation. And what you can do is if you have a fulfillment center, like if you have a Shopify site, who's ever fulfilling your Shopify site can also do your fulfillment by merchant. So for all the products we have, even the FBA ones, we have a fulfillment by merchant even our one packs. The reason we do that is because if our FBA go listing goes down because something goes wrong with the inventory, we don't stop selling because the FBM listing just takes it right over. This was so important for COVID. When COVID hit, FBA went down. I mean, shipping times were five weeks out, sometimes two months out for your product. But we had FBM already in place and the FBM just took over the buy box and we were able to ship to our customers within five days from Amazon. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. But what I'm talking about today is making a variation. When you make a three pack, a six pack and a 12 pack variation, you can customize and make a campaign where you're bidding with this variation, the six pack on your one pack listing, with your three pack on your one pack listing, with your 12 pack on your one pack listing. And the reason you can do that is because with these six packs and 12 packs, you have a higher profit. So with a higher profit, you can bid a lot more. So when you're customizing this, what I like to do is get a, a very aggressive campaign. I have a hundred dollar daily budget. I have a dynamic bids up and down, and I focus on product pages and increase that bid adjustment by 200% or more. You can go up to 900%. The key is just to be extremely aggressive with this. Now, these are called product targeting campaigns. You guys have probably done them before. And we do this both in sponsored products and in sponsored display. They both have product targeting campaigns and we bid super high. Super, super high, 15 to $25 bid plus dynamic bids up and down, which makes it even higher. Plus we go product pages up 200%. And what that results in is this. This is one of our products. This is one of our brands. And this is, I think for the, um, the tea tree eyelid wipes one pack, but you can see every single one of those products is our brand. You see our three pack, our three pack, our six pack, and you can just see it all over. This is what you can do when you have variations with higher profit margins. So make sure that you're protecting your house. Now, when you're doing this, what else will this do? It will help you get the frequently bought together. All three of those products and the frequently bought together is our product. So, so we have a brand called Medibiz and a brand called Hydrate. And that's the difference that you're seeing there. The products related to this item, those are all of ours, except for our one pesky competitor that bids like $35 a click. And they always get in there somehow. Um, so if you ever see that little Avanova brand, just go ahead and click their sponsored products. I don't care if you do that. Don't click ours though, please, unless you're gonna buy. Um, but yeah, you can see this all over the page. This is a screenshot taking, taken, and you can see the frequently bought together. The sponsored display product targeting ad is this one at the top right here. And then this is the sponsored product, product targeting ads right here. And then here's another sponsored display. And then there's another one up here. I didn't take a picture of it, but that's sponsored brands as well. And then finally, compare this items, compare this with similar items. So you have our tea trail eyelid wipes one pack comparing with our three pack. So you can get different and you can do this as a variation on your listing, or you can do this as a separate listing altogether. So we have both going on. So your action items are pretty simple for this one. Make a variation, a three pack, six pack, whatever you need to do, and then make a sponsored product, product targeting ad, and then make a sponsored display product targeting ad. And don't be afraid to be a little aggressive with this. 
saw a couple questions come in on that one. Oh, thought the recording. Cool. All right. We're good. External traffic boost part three. This is how to leverage other people to increase your sales on Amazon. Now, when I ask Amazon sellers or e-commerce builder or e-commerce people in general, I ask them, how will, how would they double their business within the next six months? And they usually give me answers that are something that they're already doing. Amazon PPC, Google ads, Facebook, all that. But what if you had to 10 X your business within the next six months, do you think you could do it? And you can, you just have to think a little bit differently. So when you're thinking about doubling your business, you don't have to stretch your brain that much. You're just thinking about the what and the how. So what can I do or how can I do it to get me to double my business? You're usually going with something familiar. But to 10x your business, you have to start thinking about the who. Who can get, who can get your product in front of an audience or who has the audience that you can get in front of? So the who will 10x your business, the how will 2x your business. I want to give you a couple examples that are non-Amazon related. So a local pizza shop, they might exchange coupons on their pizza box with a local ice cream parlor. Ice cream parlor puts their coupons on the pizza box. Pizza puts their coupons in the ice cream parlor with every receipt. Or back in the 90s, this actually worked really well in the 90s. Pizza shops used to team up with video rental places. So like family video, um, Blockbuster, all those. And they used to have, you used to get pizza coupons with your videotape. And then you used to get Blockbuster coupons with your pizza. It's crossover selling. Who can help you 10X your business? Who can help you cross over? My optometry office that we had back in South Carolina um, five years ago, we crossed over with all the local physicians in the area. So we had a local primary care physician. We had the local pharmacist. We had the local dentist. We had the local chiropractor. And I can't think of the last one. There's one more on there. I think that's it. No, that was it. And the five of us came up with this brochure on the best in Blythewood. That's where we practice was in Blythewood, South Carolina. And when you gave your receipt to the patient, you gave them this brochure and said, hey, if you're ever looking for another healthcare provider, here's who we recommend. So as an optometrist, I'm recommending a primary care physician, a dentist, a chiropractor, and a pharmacist. And then they're all doing the same thing. So we're using each other's audiences to build all of our businesses up. Who can 10X your business? Who can 10X your business? Just remember that, not how, not what. How or what will only 2X your business. Finally, for an Amazon seller, this means getting in front of an influencer, sponsoring a podcast, working with influencers. But the key part of this is don't make it transactional. Don't say, hey, I'll give you $1,000 to post. You have to develop a relationship with an influencer. I have been hanging out with an influencer in the YouTube space for the last four years. I have never asked him for anything but we finally went for the ask. And the reason was, is because we were, we were YouTube influencers as well before our channel got shut down, which is another story. Um, but we were at the same subscriber rate at the same time. And so we started having competitions with each other, having fun with each other. And now we're good friends. We go on mission trips together. My half, my team has met him. Um, he's got over 700,000 YouTube subscribers now. And now he's starting to work with us. He's putting our products in front of his audience. That's going to be huge. And guess what? he has Amazon attribution links and we're paying him based on commission. So he's going to make a 20% commission based on the traffic he sends to my products on Amazon. That's external traffic. That's 700,000 subscribers that he has on YouTube sending external traffic over to Amazon to buy. Now, also now for the record, I teamed up with seller rocket for this webinar, but I am a customer of seller rocket and I believe in what they're doing. What seller rockets doing is they are bridging the gap between the influencer and you all. You can create that, that relationship that I just talked about, but it took me four years to make. It also, it will probably take you at least six months to really get in with an influencer to, to just establish that relationship. I mean, we've gone on mission trips together. That's how we established it and solidified it, but I still pay him. And so it's not just transactional, it's relationship as well. So what Seller Rocket does is they bridge that gap between that influencer and you. Seller Rocket has started that relationship with them. And then you're paying Seller Rocket, but they already have that relationship. And so they're more likely to have that happen faster. And so um, I want to show you guys just a couple examples of some Seller Rocket articles so that they did for us. So this is the best eyelid cleansing wipes on Amazon. This is an article written by an influencer on Amazon and it's posted on Amazon. 
And it's not so much the article that will get found, but what this does is it makes you show up in results, search results like this. So editorial recommendations, the little snippet of the articles right there. And then you have your top pick, which is our product. And then you have our competitor, like I said, $8, but they're $9. So, but we're right beside them and we still get a lot of sales from this article. And this is another example of a client of ours that had the same thing happen. Um, they got posted on an article outside of Amazon. So if you guys didn't know, Seller Rocket does both on Amazon and off Amazon. And what happened was they got posted on, I think it was the New York Times or LA Times or something like that. And when that happened, you can see what happened. They were averaging anywhere from 15 to 20,000 a day. And then all of a sudden, $70,000 in a day, ran out of stock, unfortunately. So then we dropped pretty quickly. And then we hit 40K again once they found the color variations and then stock out occurred. And you can see that dramatic drop after stock out occurred. So now we're, we're still in the 15 to 20K range per day, but um, you can see the power of an influencer. Who, not what, not how, who. 10, we were doing 15,000 to 20,000 a day and one who caught it. And we did a $70,000 a day, a $30,000 a day, a $25,000 a day, and then a $39,000 a day. So that's what who can do for you. So start building a relationship with an influencer or hire Seller Rocket and try it out for a few articles. I mean, you don't have anything to lose if you just try it out for like one to two articles. I think they've written seven articles for us now. And I think we have another four in queue. So it's something that we believe in the who versus the what or the how. All right. And then my favorite, how to slay, slay the dragon that can fly over your moat as well. This is the strategy that we've used to build I love to where it's at today. This is how we have built an email list. We were getting at one time 200 emails per day added to our list. Um, we now get about 50. Again, long story. When we sold, we had to shut down our blog and our YouTube channel. We're building it back up. So we we're up to 200 leads per day. Now we're down to about 50 per day, but we're slowly building that back up. So, so far I've shown you Google ads to your Amazon listing. I've showed you Facebook ads to your Amazon listing. I've shown you external traffic from articles to your Amazon listing, even internal traffic from Amazon to your Amazon listing. Now, this strategy is Google ads to a blog post to your Amazon listing. The key part of this, though, is the blog post isn't, it, it's got to be based around the problem that your product solves. The problem that your product solves. So we've been doing this, like I said, since November of 2017, and it's helped us build our blog to almost 200,000 visitors a month. Now I think, yeah, I think we're about, about 120. So we're starting to slowly build it back up. And so what we're going to do is write a blog post around the problem that our product solves. We're going to put those attribution links inside the article, and then we're going to drive Google ad traffic to that article. And then the article, they click over to Amazon to buy. So let me show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is going to find the problem that our product solves. You should know that a little bit. And if you can't think of a problem your product solves, you probably don't have a business. You're probably just selling a widget from China. Sorry. Truth. Um, our products, we serve a postmenopausal female that has dry eye. So what other problems might they have? So I'm going to go to Google Keyword Planner. I'm going to go to Discover New Keywords. I'm going to type in blepharitis, dry eyes, dry eye, blepharitis. That is the problem that our product solves. So when I do that, I look at this average monthly search volume with Google Keyword Planner, and I sort it by average monthly searches. And what I'm looking for is something that has a high amount of monthly searches with a low competition. Now competition on Google um, Keyword Planner is all around competition on Google ads. So that top one, 200,000 searches a month, low competition on Google ads, which means low clicks, to get to the top of page one for, for Google ads, you're going to pay five cents to 40 cents. Now that's five cents a click to get somebody to go over to your article, to read a blog post about a problem that they're having and your product solves it at the end of that blog post. Oh, by the way, go click it over and buy it on Amazon. Now, the first question everybody asks, why don't you just try to convert them on, you have them on your page, on your blog, on your website. Why don't you just convert them there? My blog, my website has a one to 3% conversion rate, 3% on a good day, 1% usually. But Amazon, you saw the conversion rates, 30 to 50%. People trust Amazon. People know Amazon. 
their information is already in Amazon, their credit card, their address, everything. It's one click of a button, their thumb. It's click over to Amazon attribution, click to buy now. It's that simple with Amazon. On your website, they have to fill out everything again. So that's why we go over to Amazon. But we committed to that and that's all we do now. So after we figured out the word, we're then gonna outline our article and we're gonna create a catchy title. Now, a catchy title is based around a couple of things. So you can do your, your typical titles around the, the what, who, what, or what, who, how question titles. So we're gonna do blepharitis in this case. What is blepharitis? What causes blepharitis? What is blepharitis treatment? But you can also do what's called a listicle. A listicle is an odd number in the front, a superlative word, second, best, worst, simple, and then your keywords. So three simple, three simple step guide to blepharitis management. Seven best ways to detox your body. Seven worst foods for the paleo for paleo diet. And then what we're going to do is outline the article. So the outline of the article will be three simple step guide to blepharitis management. What is blepharitis? What causes blepharitis? Here's the three simple step guide to blepharitis management. All three of those steps are going to be ours. I'll show you some examples here in just a little bit. And then if you don't want to write the article, hire someone to write the article or write it yourself. So drive Google ads traffic using the strategy above with that low cost per click around the problem that your product solves. So hire someone, and then we're going to make a Google ad, just like I showed you above, maximizing clicks around the problem. So I'm not going to be bidding on my product-based keywords anymore, like eyelid wipes or sunglasses. I'm going to be bidding on blepharitis because that's the problem that nobody's going after. Low cost per click, high volume. So with this strategy... I want you to write one article per month around the problem that your product solves, drive that cheap traffic with Google, and then slay your dragon. Track it the same way we did with the other one. Google ads in, Amazon attribution out. I wanna show you some examples of this one as well, but let's do a quick recap. So target a higher ACOS than you're doing now. Break even ACOS is equal to your profit margin. Use a coupon to increase conversions, especially before a big sale event. Google ads, cheap Google ads to your Amazon listing using the Amazon attribution. Facebook ads to your Amazon listing using Amazon attribution. Track those. Try to make one per week if you can. If you can do more, that's great. Make multi-pack variations. And then start sponsored display and sponsored product defensive ads on those and bid high. Finally, use Seller Rocket or try other influencers out to drive more external traffic or even internal traffic on Amazon. So the example I gave you was an internal article on Amazon that led to that editorial recommendation, but they also do external articles to get traffic over to your, to your listing as well. And then finally, Google ads to a blog post to your Amazon listing. All right, so if you have any questions, put them in the chat. I'll go over, I have a couple more minutes. I have about five minutes left. And so um, I can go over a couple examples to show you some articles that we've written. And then if you want my free Amazon PPC course, you can go to profitablepineapple.com forward slash bonus. So profitablepineapple.com forward slash bonus. And you can get my free Amazon PPC course where um, I'll break down everything. Okay. And we had one question come in. Uh, how do you find slash hire writers? Oh, Fiverr. Fiverr.com. You can type in content creator and the, you'll find a million of them. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the main one that we use. And then for defensive ads on Amazon, I presume you need the buy box for these ads to show, right? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, if you're, you, you sound like you're in a wholesale model. So um, Google ads, use that strategy. I think it's going to work really well for you. All right. I think Adam put in the chat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> free Amazon PPC masterclass. Okay. Let me go over a couple. If you guys have any other questions, put them down below, but I'll show you my vlog so you guys can see that. Mm -hmm. Quick question while you pull that up. Uh, yeah. For Google ads, do you only run AdWords campaigns? Yes. I think I'm understanding your question right. Like I don't, do I run like any, um, I guess rephrase that question. 
they have display shopping discovery oh yes i only do search search but you can play with the shopping ones so you can use shopping and put an amazon affiliate link in there as well uh, or attribution link sorry do you stay with one content creator for all your articles or keep posting for new content creation jobs? Um, you'll find a couple that are good and writers come and go very, very quickly, very quickly. Um, and they're very diva-ish. <laughs> um, so yeah, you'll, you'll cycle through some writers, but you'll find some good ones. And then and... there's the 80-20, I've been practicing your 80-20 methodology. Really great. Thanks for teaching me this. Yeah. Do you segment keywords even the singular and the plural. I've been trying. Oh, yeah. I've been trying this since I see uh, materially different conversion rates between uh, badminton racket versus badminton racket. So I created two campaigns and negated the plural. Yeah, I it's that. um. I I don't think you need to do that. That's a lot of work. Number one. Um, but yeah, you can try it. It doesn't hurt to try it. It's all about testing. And if you have badminton racket in a phrase match campaign, it's going to pick up that plural. But yeah, you can try it with an exact, but I don't think it's necessary to do that. It's a lot of, a lot more work. Um, what range do we pay for writers? Uh, anywhere from $60 per article to $200 per article, depending on the content and how long it is. All right, so this is a couple examples. Um, so seven best blepharitis hygiene tips to help you find relief, five best tea tree oil eye wipes. Um, and then let's see what else we got. Here's one of my favorites. Uh, three ingredients to avoid in your eye cream and face moisturizer. So seven best hygiene tips. What is blepharitis? Seven best eye hygiene tips. Eye makeup remover. This is our brand, our brand, our brand, our brand. Ours, ours, ours ours uh we wholesale that product that's our brand so when you start writing these articles when we started writing this in 2017 we didn't have all these products but we came out with the products as a result of what we saw getting clicks and purchased um five best tea tree wipes ours is number one of course and then we have one of our other products is number two and then we have other products is number three four or five it's not even all of our products three ingredients to avoid in your eye cream and face moisturizer, number one, retinol, two, phenoxyethanol, three, parabens. We explain why, and then choosing a safer option, which is ours. And then, oh, I promised that one. All right, to figure out. <laughs> Completely random, but what you need to be clicking. So, Let's go over to one of my products. So this is our Medivis cooling mask. We have, so these, this is our search term report. We've already organized it and put it into nice orderly order. We figure out our clicks to order first. So these are three columns that we actually put on. And our clicks to order is simply our clicks divided by our orders, which comes from our search term report. So clicks divided by orders. So for every 6.83 clicks, we get an order. Our maximum cost per acquisition is $11.27. That's our profit. $11.27 divided by $6.83 is $1.65. So our maximum cost per click is $1.65. So when you come over here and look at this, we're bidding $2.14 right now with the 55% ACOS. This is going to get really into the weeds. So $11.27 divided by $24.97. So this product is 45% ACOS. Can't get it out of the way. There we go. All right. So it's a 45% ACOS. Let me just, oops, 45% ACOS. Right now, this top keyword is getting a 55% ACOS at a 214 click. So to get it down to that break even ACOS, we need to start bidding $1.65 on that search term. I hope that made sense. It's just math. Another example. This one is getting a 38% ACOS. So we're under ACOS goal at 254. So we can actually raise our bid to 295 in order to be more aggressive on that keyword to get up to that 
So I hope that makes sense. And two final questions uh, that came in. And don't worry, everybody, the, uh, this is being recorded. We'll be sent out afterwards. So contact information will be present as well. Um, are you certified to get your product ads to run on Google Merchant Center? I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a Google Ads expert. I am a Google Ads to Amazon expert. So no, I don't know anything about Google Ads other than running my ads to Amazon. Um, we focus everything on Amazon. So try it. I have no idea what that is. So. Yeah. Will Amazon attribution only work for search ad campaigns on Google or can we run the entire uh, gamut of campaign types? You can put Amazon attribution ads anywhere, anywhere. Give them to an influencer. So I'm giving them to our influencer to send from YouTube. I'm giving them to another influencer to send from their blog. I'm giving them to Google ads, of course, Bing ads, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever you want. You can run it anywhere. That's the beauty of it. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I know we went over on the time here, but thank you so much for joining. Uh, as I mentioned, this has been recorded. I will have a list of all those who not only registered, but attended as well. And uh, we'll be getting that out either by later this evening or tomorrow morning. Uh, getting recording everybody's hands. And thank you. Thank you, Travis, so much for joining us. And Thanks. look forward to hosting continued webinars with you. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Right. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Amazon PPC may seem like a complex subject, but it doesn't have to be, and that is why we created this channel. On top of Amazon PPC, we're going to share different tactics and strategies that we've used to build a multi-million dollar business, as well as the strategies that we're using to build a $100 million company, which is our goal. We don't know how we're going to get there yet, but that's our goal, and we want to take you along for the ride. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell to be notified whenever we come out with great business building in the Amazon PPC strategies.